Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today for Beast Coast Pokemon, I wanted to summarize where the Regulation F VGC metagame currently is at the moment. This is one of the fastest moving metagames that I can remember. It feels like each week we see major new Pokemon and strategies being developed, and so wanted to just get you all up to speed on where things are currently at the moment after a couple of major championships. Let's just dive right into things. So there have been three major tournaments so far, the Portland Regional Championships, the Charlotte Regional Championships, and the Liverpool Regional Championships. And so from these events, we have a pretty good sense of what's popular and what teams have been performing the best. This is one of my favorite resources right now. It's labmouse.net, and they specifically have a top teams page, which aggregates the win rate of top performing compositions from the major tournaments and assigns a score to it as well. So you can use this to really keep track of teams that have really good win rates in particular. And I would prepare for definitely the top 10 teams on this page. And it's something that you should just keep your eye out on because, of course, the top teams are teams that people are going to use more frequently as well as time goes on, right? From this, we see a couple of major archetypes. You've got Tornadus, Fluttermane, Chiyu, Glamora. Uh, this team hasn't won a tournament yet, but it's gotten top eight at both the most recent regionals, and it's just really, really consistent. Uh, its win rate is a lot higher than most things that you see on this list. Frigograph Blood Moon is also, of course, really popular. This is the variant without Tailwind, but you also have Tailwind variants. For example, the team that finished second at Charlotte Regionals is down here. We've got Gouging Fire, Howl stuff with King Gambit, Ogre Pond, as well as Champau. You've got Wolf's team. Team. You've got two different versions of Archaladon. This version, of course, has Baxcalibur. This version has Incineroar. You've got Roaring Moon Balance, uh, which is actually a lot higher than I would have expected. This is at number six right now in terms of record as well as score. And so, yeah, surprised to see it actually pop up this high, but it uh, makes sense because I think Roaring Moon's in an interesting spot right now in this format. More Tornadus Glamora stuff, although this version has Entei rather than Chiyu. You've got the Dondozo team that finished second at Portland Regionals, and then a couple different variants of uh, Tornadus with Hyper Offense, including Iron Crown plus NDD. So, yeah. I think this is a really valuable resource. None of these teams really should be shocking, but it's cool to just see which teams have been performing with a high win rate percentage, right? Like the two teams to really call out in terms of win rate percentage here are the Tornadus Glamora teams, where you've got 60% plus win rate for them. So uh, this is definitely a resource you should bookmark though, because it's a nice way to just easily track what the top performing six Pokemon from recent events are. First of all, balanced teams have been doing really well. I generally define these teams as teams that just consist of Pokemon that are really strong and synergize well with each other, but don't necessarily have a very specific strategy that they need to adhere to. For example, it's not like you always need to set up Tailwind or always need to set up Trick Room. I would classify all the teams that have won so far as balanced teams. Of course, the same team won both the Liverpool and the Charlotte Regional Championships. This team was developed by our very own Wolf Glick, and it features a Fire Water Grass Core of Incineroar Rillaboom as well as Water Urshifu. You've also got the Swords Dance Fire Ogre Pond, Calm Mind Flutter Main, and Trick Room Frigograph. Frigograph, by the way, just a Pokemon that's been performing incredibly well recently, and part of this is because of the team that won the very first Regional Championships, which was also a balanced team. But these teams just work out really well because you have some of the best tools in the game, right? For example, Wolf's team has multiple fake out users, multiple setup users with Fluttermane as well as Ogre Pond. Uh, Frigograph's ability is just one of the best in the game right now, given the amount of priority that exists. And the Hyper Voice plus Throat Spray combination is something that I expect to rise in popularity. It just dishes so much damage and is a really reliable means of offense. Uh, Frigograph running Psychic is also quite nice because there are a lot of Pokemon that are weak to Psychic in the format right now, like Water Urshifu, for example. Some sets use a little bit more support with Dazzling Gleam and Helping Hand, for example, but uh, those sets generally don't dish out as much damage. So uh, this team, of course, is one of the top teams to look out for. I actually don't think it's very easy to pilot, nor do I think Balance is the easiest archetype to play. But when a truly exceptional player is using it, they just have so many tools to work with. What's interesting is the Balance team that won the very first regional championships used by Alex Underhill uh, has actually decreased in popularity a lot. And a big reason for that is because this team depends a lot on priority. You've got, of course, Extreme Speed on Dragonite, as well as Extreme Speed on Entei, Sucker Punch on Champau, Thunderclap on Raging Bolt, and so Frigograph rising in popularity has definitely decreased the popularity of Pokemon like Dragonite. Uh, Raging Bolt's still really good, and we've seen a lot of different sets pop up recently, but uh, it feels like just from the very first regional championships, we've already seen a shift away from this kind of balance-oriented team. Multiple cool things about this team, especially being able to win with Entei. Entei is also a Pokemon I feel like has kind of decreased a little bit in usage recently, uh, but we're in a format right now where there's so many good fire types, and so it's still definitely a viable option. So these are just two examples of balanced teams, but you know, I would classify Flavio's team which finished second at the Liverpool Regional Championships as a balanced esque team as well. Of course, once again, you've got the Firewater Grass Corps of Incineroar Rillaboom, this time with Ogre Pond. A couple of interesting
interesting things to call out from Flavius, uh, Flavio's team is the Bexcalibur as well as the Heatran. And so Bexcalibur here is a sword stance variant with clear amulet. Uh, there's a lot of Intimidate right now in the format, especially with Incineroar. And so this is a pretty unique sweeper. Uh, Baxcalibur is a Pokemon that's performed incredibly well throughout Scarlet and Violet VGC, but its usage rate isn't that high. Uh, and so this is something that popped up. I've not seen many other people use this kind of set in particular. And the idea is that you just completely nullify Intimidate. You get a Sword Stance off and Glaive Rush is able to just get a one-hit knockout onto so many Pokemon in the format. Key Trend's also something that has come back into the format, I think partially because of the popularity of Pokemon like Incineroar and Rillaboom. Uh, one meta development has also led a lot of Rillabooms are dropping a ground type attack and they'll use this moveset with double grass, U-turn and fake out. Uh, and so Heatran obviously can match up really well into Rillaboom, really well into Fluttermane, really well into Incinera as well. So both of these are Pokemon that I don't think I've seen that much play right now, but Flavio getting second at regionals with it should bring some more spotlight to it. A lot of examples of balance teams, but uh, I think, yeah, those are just some of the most notable ones and they've obviously been performing incredibly well. I also want to ca call out the Gouging Fire teams that have been popping up recently. Uh, so for example, Luca Tregate got sec or third at the Charlotte Regional Championships with a uh, How Gouging Fire. This is one of the brand new sets that I feel like has popped up recently and the idea is that you have the speed booster energy, you surround Gouging Fire with a lot of really powerful physical attackers and they're able to all just capitalize off Howl. And so with this team in particular, you've got Chen Pao, Ogre Pond, Rillaboom, and King Gambit. Uh, King Gambit in particular, really threatening Pokemon right you are able to boost its attack through sword stance through how through defiant and champau can lower your opponent's defenses as well and so it's a really really nice combination the main thing to note about this kind of gouging fire set is that it doesn't necessarily threaten with too much damage by itself so it's mainly used to support its partners but if you get a couple boosts onto it heat crash of course can do really meaningful damage onto things like rillaboom as well as flutter main so uh, this is kind of one of the primary ways that people are using gouging fire right now it is also not the easiest to execute uh, because you have to be very smart about who to support gouging fire with and how to get those how boosts off without getting punished when you are able to get these free attack boosts they can really just overwhelm your opponent so this is one of the brand new pokemon of course introduced via the dlc a lot of different ways you can use gouging fire but this is probably one of the most popular ones right now so i would kind of classify that team as a balance-esque team as well moving on from balance i want to cover of course one of the most popular archetypes which is tailwind and specifically tornadus what's interesting is that whimsicott usage actually still hasn't been super high and people just really like tornadoes because flying is really valuable in this format there's so many pokemon that are weak to flying type attacks that are popular grass types for example like ogre pond water as well as ogre pond fire amoongus rillaboom you also have fighting types like urshifu for example in terms of tornadoes teams they are everywhere right now the liverpool regional championships actually had four tornadoes teams in the top eight but they all actually look pretty different from each other for example world champion eduardo cunha had a tornadoes team that utilized a nasty plot golden go a uh, golden go isn't the most popular pokemon right now but of course it still is really good and this is very similar to the nasty plot sets that have performed well in previous formats uh, one of the main things to call out for this team in particular is that you have the assault vest raging bolt this to me feels like one of the brand new meta developments that have really popped up recently assault vest raging bolt finished in both third place as well as fourth place here at this tournament and so the idea is that it's just really bulky and can disrupt opposing teams and can also wall a lot of special attackers uh, some people will use snarl for example eduardo here use terra blast but this is one example of a tornadoes team uh, this team i'd say has a little bit more bulk to work with, right? You've got Ogre Pond with the special defense boost when you Terra and center our Raging Bolt. Uh, but of course, the idea is you just set up Tailwind and you can overwhelm your opponent with so many means of offense. We also have seen a really popular Tornadus team recently, which is this new variant with Fluttermane, Chiyu, and Glamora. Uh, Glamora is one of the brand new Pokemon that capitalizes off this DLC because it now gets access to Meteor Beam plus Power Herb. So it's a really nasty combination. Uh, this team also finished in the top eight of the Charlotte Regional Championship where Steve and Mia piloted it to a top 8 finish. It is very similar in terms of concept, right? The idea is, once again, you use really powerful attackers. Uh, for example, Fluttermane Chiyu really effectively. Tornadus Chiyu can just Sunny Day into Heat Wave. Tornadus Glamora, you can just set up Tailwind and Glamora can blow things up with a plus one Meteor Beam. Uh, and so, yeah, this Fluttermane Chiyu Glamora Torn combo in particular, I feel like has been really rising in popularity and it's just overwhelming to deal with, right? You have multiple means of speed control, Tailwind being one as well as Icy Wind from Fluttermane being the other. A version of this team has gotten top 8 at both of the most recent majors and it's so definitely something to watch out for. We also see another version of Hyper Offense Tornadus, which Roberto Parente used to finish in top 8 of Liverpool Regionals, and this team has just so much fast-paced offense. I would very much classify it as a Hyper Offense team here. 
as you can see you have tornadoes but you just have some of the strongest attackers in the game right dragon fang reggie drago with that dragon energy choice scarf water or shifu iron crown plus nd and then fire ogre pond uh, it's a really explosive team because you have so many lead combinations, right? You could go Tornadus plus Urshifu, Tornadus plus Reggie Drago, Tornadus plus Ogre Pond, NDD plus Iron Crown, NDD plus Urshifu is also fun where you can just go for Follow Me and uh, Urshifu can just start dishing out massive amounts of damage. This team has very little bulk to work with, but the idea is that you can win games very, very quickly. And Reggie Drago is a Pokemon that I feel like has gone through a roller coaster throughout the last couple of months, but it always seems to do well in every other tournament, it feels like. And so uh, this team essentially utilizes Drago really Really well you can even just go for like ndd drago lead follow me and then just start dishing out damage with dragon energy so very hyper offensive uh tornadus team probably one of the most hyper offensive versions out there right now we also have tornadus with dondozo so you can see the team that finished in eighth place here has dondozo supported by tornadus uh, so once again tornadus glamora fluttermane or dark urshifu that's a core that we actually saw on the chi yu plus uh fluttermane variant but this one of course does not have chi yu instead you've got dondozo and tatsugiri dondozo is a pokemon that all also has had varying success throughout this format. It got second place at the first regional championships piloted by Chuppa Cross. It got top eight at this regionals, but it had basically no impact on the Charlotte regional championships. And so I think the thing about Dondozo is that it's still not the easiest composition to use at a high level since a lot of people have good game plans against it. This is one of the newer Dozo teams that have popped up. And of course, the idea is that you don't even necessarily need to bring Dozo. We actually saw this team on stream and like Tatsugiri sometimes would just be used without Dondozo. Turns out Life Orb Tatsugiri is actually still a pretty effective attacker, right? And so there's one other uh, Tornadus team that exists. And then one of the final Tornadus teams that I want to cover is the one that finished second at the Charlotte Regional Championships. Uh, this team utilizes Tailwind and Trick Room, so you've got Tornadus as well as Farigaraph. And the idea is that Ursaluna Blood Wound can be piloted either under Tailwind or under either uh, under Trick Room, which I think is really cool. Uh, with this team, you also have clear Amulet Iron Hands. Uh, Iron Hands, of course, has been one of the most popular picks in Scarlet and Violet VGC, but the classic Assault Vest set has definitely decreased in popularity since there's so much Intimidate running around right now. Clear Amulet's really nice, especially with close combat because this gives you a much more reliable answer into Incineroar, which of course is quite common. You're able to just threaten it with a big knockout. Uh, helping Hand support from Frigraph plus Iron Hands is such a deadly combination. A helping Hand close combat is able to just destroy so many things in this format. But this is one of the archetypes that's been rising, which is a combination of Tailwind as well as Trick Room. And we actually saw this perform very, very well at the Charlotte Regional Championships. For example, the team that finished in fourth place also had Tornadus plus Frigraph and Ursaluna Blood Moon. And so so it is just something that people are utilizing a little bit more, uh, realizing that Blood Moon is a Pokemon that can be effectively used both under Tailwind as well as Trick Room. You can see that there are a lot of different Tornadus teams that exist right now. It's just one of the, if not the best Tailwind users still, and it's really effective in enabling its partners. A lot of different Tailwind teams specifically that are out there right now. Of course, when we talk about Tailwind, we also have to talk about Trick Room. Now, Trick Room has been a staple on a lot of teams. Uh, a lot of the teams that utilize Trick Room don't necessarily rely on it, but Wolf's team with that Trick Room Frigograph, of course, has Trick Room. Uh, you also have teams that uh, go a little bit harder into setting up Trick Room. So, for example, Alex Soto, who's been one of the most notable hard Trick Room players from Europe, maybe the number one most notable Trick Room player, used hard Trick Room to uh, secure a 11th place finish here. And so this team utilizes three Trick Room users in NDD, the Hatterene, as well as the Gallade. Uh, Gallade's the Pokemon I, think I would say stands out the most on this team. Uh, Sharpness plus Gallade's attacks plus Clear Amulet plus Psychic terrain and helping hand support means that Gallade can deal so much damage with Sacred Sword and Psycho Cut. It also gets access to Wide Guard, which is one of the more underplayed moves in the format right now, and Wide Guard is so valuable to stop all the spread that exists, whether it be things like Hyper Voice from Blood Moon or, uh, for example, Bleak Wind Storm from Tornadus, Expanding Force from Iron Crown, and so Gallade just having access to that Wide Guard is really, really nice. But of course, this team generally just aims to set up Trick Room as much as possible. You do have one faster Pokemon in the Iron Crown here. Uh, this Iron Crown set basically feels like it's pretty standard. You'll sometimes see people run Focus Blast over Terra Blast, but Focus Blast is incredibly inconsistent because of its accuracy. Some people will also run uh, Ground Terra with the Terra Blast in order to also pressure things like Incineroar for super effective damage. But most people will either use a Special Attack Booster Energy or a Speed Booster Energy on Crown, depending 
depending on how their team is built. Uh, and so crown here means you don't always have to rely on trick room uh, immediately. You can go with something like Andy D plus crown in the early game. Then once crown feigns, set up trick room and then try to sweep with like Torquil and Hattering under trick room. But uh, hard trick room is something that I think doesn't see that much play, but it feels like it always is able to sneak into uh, the top eight, for example. Uh, we also saw hard trick room team get top eight at the Portland Regional Championships. Uh, this one has a lot of the same cores we saw earlier, but uh, the main things to call out here is that this team has Ursa Luna uh, and as well as a choice scarf for Shifu. So you can use Scarf or Shifu in the early game, you turn out, set up Trick Room, and then sweep from there. So these hard Trick Room teams really like using Torkoal in particular. Uh, and of course, Hatterene plus the Inity combination is still really darn good. Uh, that's one composition that you should be prepared for. What's interesting is that from the Liverpool Regional Championships, it feels like a Cornerstone Ogre Pond, something that actually was really rising in usage. For example, Nils Dunlop, who is a multiple time world championship uh, top cutter, used a Cornerstone Ogre Pawn with Frigraph, with Ursaluna, with Torkoal. Cornerstone Ogre Pawn is really nice as a way to enable the Trick Room because it's got that sturdy plus follow me combination. Uh, and so with this, you can lead something like the Ogre Pawn plus Frigraph and almost always guarantee Trick Room setting up. Uh, once the Ogre Pawn faints, you get a free switch in into Ursaluna or Torkoal. This team isn't necessarily hard Trick Room, as you can see, because you've got this Choice Scarf Entei. So you can lead something like Torkoal plus Entei and immediately just go for Helping Hand plus Eruption. Uh, Eruption being a more unique call on Entei as well. Normally people just run physical attacks, but uh, having Fire, Terra, plus the Sun, plus Helping Hand means that Entei and Torkoal can be a really nasty combination as well. A uh, Cornerstone Ogre Pond is something that I personally noticed rising in usage, right? If you look at the top 32 teams, like there's another Cornerstone Ogre Pond uh, right here in 19th place, for example. The set are fairly straightforward. You generally want follow me, spiky shield, ivy cudgel, and the grass type attack. I, I just think it's interesting that multiple people were using this core of Frigoraph, Cornerstone Ogre Pond, as well as Torkoal. So uh, Trick Room still continues to be good and not necessarily everyone is using hard Trick Room. I'd say for the most part, uh, people don't rely only on Trick Room to win, uh, but we definitely see it on a fair number of teams. Uh, of course, NDD likes to use it as well. This team that I covered earlier in top eight, for example, uh, has Trick Room on NDD. This is mainly to reverse opposing Trick Rooms rather than to set it up for this team because this team is really fast, but uh, that's one of the values of having Trick Room on a team that doesn't necessarily need it. You can use it to stop opposing Trick Rooms or reverse it, which is really nice. Uh, we also, of course, see Cresselia, although it's not as common. Uh, this Cresselia got top eight at the Liverpool Regional Championships, and this team is actually very centered around Registeel. Feels like a balance-esque team, but Registeel is definitely one of the primary carries of this team. Uh, so Cresselia, of course, also gets access to Trick Room. One of the main reasons it's really nice is because with Safety Goggles and Lunar Blessing, you can really just neutralize Amoongus, because Amoongus can't support Cresselia, and even if they put Cresselia's partner to sleep, a Lunar Blessing will just immediately wake up that Pokemon, right? So uh, Registeel and general setup oriented Pokemon like Como, for example, are not very common in terms of usage, but we've seen high level players utilize them. And so uh, it's something that you should at least you know think about. Speaking of setup oriented teams, one team that has popped up recently is the team that Alex Gomez and Eric Rios used at the Liverpool Regional Championships. And this team has Como with Porygon 2 and Ting Lu. Uh, the original idea from this team actually came from Scott Iwafuchi, who is one of the most notable, if not, I would say the most notable Porygon 2 player. Scott finished 16th place at the Charlotte Regional Championships with an 11 and 4 record using Porygon 2. And so Porygon 2 is in an interesting spot right now in the format where Poison Terra Terra Blast is really nice to put on pressure against grass types like Rillaboom as well as Water Ogre Pond, for example. It's also just a bulky Pokemon that is difficult to deal with. And so uh, we've seen different variations of this team. The initial version that Scott had had Pokemon like Landorus as well as Golden Go. And the newer variant has Pokemon like Como as well as Team Lu. A Team Lu is something that some people have been theorying recently because of its matchup into Furigraph as well as other special attackers. For example, Furigraph and the Blood Moon Ursaluna really struggle against Team Lu in particular, so this thing can soak up damage while also just being a huge nuisance. Snarl is also really good into psychic spam teams like the Entity Iron Crown stuff, and it is just difficult to knock out Team Lu quickly. And so, yeah, this is one of the brand new meta developments, which is funny because Tainlu was one of the best Pokemon in earlier Scarlet and Violet VGC. It's completely fallen off a cliff, but now we're seeing some usage for it once again. I don't expect it to be very popular, but just keep in mind that some of the best players in the world are now thinking about it a little bit more. NDD and Iron Crown is something that I've already talked about a little bit, but it is still something that you'll see in different forms, right? For example, in this version, we've got NDD plus Iron Crown with Tailwind. Under here, we've got NDD plus Iron Crown in Trick Room, right? And so, so a lot of different ways that people are utilizing it in terms of how to support it. One of the most notable NED crown teams
teams was the team that Toller Webb and Justin Karras used at the Charlotte Regional Championships. Uh, this team, of course, has just a lot of immediate offense. This is actually very similar to uh, the Reggie Drago team we just had. You just see Fluttermane here instead of Reggie Drago, but the rest of the Pokemon are all the same, right? So once again, just relying on a lot of immediate offense. Uh, the, the main thing about Indity and Crown is that you're going to need to clear Dark types, and so it's really important to have answers into Dark type Pokemon or Dark type Terras. But even though it feels like the metagame has a lot of Dark types right now, this is still a really threatening duo, and if you don't position well against it, it can just completely sweep you. That's one other archetype, of course, that you need to be prepared for. I think one other thing to watch out for is Archaladon, especially on rain compositions. And so, for example, it first originated from the Portland Regional Championships, where it finished in the top 16, as you can see right here. This team is really, really fun. I think it has a lot of immediate offense. Archaladon, when supported by Rain, is able to just snowball so quickly with Electroshot in particular. Uh, this team also has that clear amulet back Excalibur, but instead of Swords Dance, you're running uh, Icicle Crash. Uh, and the idea here is that Pelipper is just an amazing partner for Archaladon, as well as Urshifu. Uh, you are also able to have Wide Guard on Pelipper, and I talked about Wide Guard a little bit earlier. Incredible support move in this format right now. And so this feels like the most popular Archaladon team. We've seen people use derivatives of it after, uh, for example, uh, Kazuki here finished in the top 32 of the Charlotte Regional Championships using the exact same six Pokemon. Uh, we also have uh, Archaladon down here, this version, of course, with Incineroar over Baxcalibur and Archaladon Rain down here as well. So you can see multiple versions of it in the top 32. Uh, and I think it's just one of the most consistent Archaladon teams that exists in the format right now. So uh, Assault Vest Archaladon has kind of been the go-to and we've seen kind of different variants of it. But uh, for the most part, it's really, really nicely supported with pa uh, Pelican. I talked about Trick Room earlier, uh, and I probably should have gotten a little bit more in depth because the Frigora plus Blood Moon combination is just something that a lot of people have been using. What's interesting, though, is how quickly the metagame develops, right? If you look at the top eight of the Liverpool Regional Championships, which was the most recent tournament, there's actually no Frigograph plus Blood Moon, which is absolutely shocking compared to Charlotte Regionals, where we've got Frigograph Blood Moon, Frigograph Blood Moon. We've got Blood Moon here as well. I mean, there's two just in the top four alone here, right? The main idea, of course, is that Frigograph is just a really good Trick Room setter, and then Blood Moon is just a really effective attacker. I think initially people were just using like Trick Room versions of this team without Tailwind, but now Tailwind has popped up. For example, the team let Jody as used to get 10th place at Charlotte Regionals uh, does not have Tailwind. It's just the Frigograph plus the Blood Moon combination, but uh, we've seen a lot of versions with Tailwind pop up recently. So even though its uh, popularity might be decreased a little bit and people are trying to counter a little bit harder, I think it is still quite good. For example, it finished just outside of the top eight here at the uh, Liverpool Regional Championships, and we also see it here at 15th place, so two in the top 16, essentially. Uh, so still decent, uh, but it's something that has definitely you know performed really well and then did not make Make it into the top eight of the most recent tournament which i think is pretty interesting in itself so in terms of the overall top archetypes so far we've talked about balance teams and it feels like a lot of the top performing teams are different versions of balance uh, by the way like earlier i was just covering the balance teams that have won but we also have for example balance with roaring moon popping back up uh, people are using roaring moon because of acrobatics having flying coverage once again really really nice into a lot of the grass type that exists out there a uh, champo dragonite still exists right i talked about uh, the how on the Gouging Fire earlier. Uh, Pow Knight still is okay. Uh, you can see Rogov Malavia here has been one of the best players this season using an Assault Vest set rather than Choice Band. I think this makes a lot of sense. It's a little bit harder to use Choice Band when Furgraph is so common, so being able to switch moves I think is really valuable. Paul Chua, really one of the most notable balanced players using Calm Mind Raging Bolt as well. A lot of different ways that you can run it, but at the end of the day, these teams just utilize, like I said, a lot of the best Pokemon that exists in the game, right? So, balanced teams are everywhere, Tornadus teams are everywhere, and there's tons of different ways to support Tornadus. You've got Trick Room teams, and those can either be hard Trick Room teams or ones that utilize Pokemon like Furgraph and Blood Boom, but don't necessarily always need Trick Room to be set up. And then you have combos like Indy plus Iron Crown, as well as Archaladon plus the, or sorry, Archaladon plus Pelipper. Uh, and so those are kind of the some of the top compositions that you should be prepared for. There've also been kind of unique individual Pokemon that have uh, risen uh, to the top and performed really well. So I wanted to just call it a couple. From Liverpool Regionals, we have that Clear Amulet Bax Caliber. We've got the Reggie Steel that finished in top eight. Uh, we have Galarian Articuno here. Uh, this is a Freezing Glare, Terror Blast, Trick Room Protect set. This team kind of an initially originated from a team that Jamie Boyd had built uh, in a previous format. But uh, Galarian Articuno, of course, nice in a format where there is a lot of Intimidate. Uh, Araquanid here finished in 13th place. This set of Protect, Liquidation, Leech Life, and Substitute. This is just a really effective attacker under Trick Room in particular. Also gets access to Wide Guard if that's a move that you wanted to consider. We 
We've got the Articuno and the Alola Ninetales here in 17th place. Feels like Articuno ha always has like one big performance at some of these tournaments. Uh, and so it's, it's just really annoying to deal with because of Snow Cloak and Rocky Helmet. Sheer Cold, Freeze Dry, Tailwind, and Roost. I would, you know, these are not things that I would consider super meta, but they're things that should at least be on our radar now that someone's done well with them. Uh, Galarian Weezing here also did quite well. The idea, of course, is neutralizing gas uh, is a really incredible ability, and you're able to use it to disrupt your opponent. One thing that I haven't mentioned as much, by the way, as an archetype is sun-oriented teams. These teams, I think, are not very popular because they're difficult to use and because there are uh, ways to control the weather, whether it be like Rain Dance, Tornadus, or Pelipper, right? Uh, and, but, you know, these teams generally love using Walking Wake. They love using Pokemon with Protosynthesis like Fluttermane as well. And so we haven't seen one do like super, super well and make a really deep run so far, but uh, it is still definitely a composition that you need to respect. A lot of different ways that you can run these teams as well. Sometimes you'll see Pokemon like Whimsicott or Jumpluff. This one has a fast mode, but it also has a trick room mode with the Furigraph, Cornerstone, Ogre Pond as well as Torkoal. Uh, and so, yeah, just be aware of Torkoal in particular, paired with a lot of these Protosynthesis Pokemon being quite popular. Uh, Jamie Boy had probably the most unique team that I saw from the Liverpool Regional Championships. He had Assault Vest Champau, this Grass Ogre Pond, Rocky Helmet Corviknight, Calmine Primarina, and Basket Legion. So, all of these are just really, really wild Pokemon for the most part, uh, other than the Champau and the Gouging Fire. Uh, Corviknight's in an interesting place in the meta right now because Mirror Armor is such a good ability, and you're able to have a lot of good coverage into common Pokemon in the format right now as well. I talked about Dondozo a little bit earlier. Like I said, Dondozo is like really fallen out in terms of tournament play, but it still needs to be respected. I think the Dondozo team that Trepa Cross used to get second at the Portland Regional Championships was really powerful and having fought against it, I feel like I always lose against it. This team is really flexible because you have the Pow Knight combination, but you also have Glamora and Grass Ogre Pond. I think Glamora plus Champau in particular is a really scary lead combo to go with. This Dondozo has uh, Rocky Helmet, which just gives you a better matchup against, of course, Urshifu, but some players like to still just use uh, Leftovers as an item. So uh, Dondozo is one of the most flexible Pokemon in BGC just because of it, the choice of ability as well as item and type and all of those can go a really long way so you should still prepare for this team like i feel like i probably play against it more on ladder than in tournament on, on ladder it's just such a menace right because dondozo uh, has so many options uh, at its disposal in terms of just specific pokemon usage uh, i think you know the top 12 pokemon really aren't surprising by any means this is from liverpool regional specifically in terms of meta developments i would say let dark urshifu has definitely risen significantly in popularity whereas water urshifu has decreased although it still obviously is winning tournaments a uh, furograph usage is really good right now it's really high and so that's why people are thinking about things like Tain Lu in order to counter for a graph uh, Raging Bolt still is the most popular brand new Pokemon from the DLC uh, that did not previously exist. King Gambit used to just quite high as well. Ursaluna Blood Moon, like I mentioned, with Ferrograph, really popular. And Gouging Fire has been rising a lot, right? It's uh, 20th here in terms of Liverpool Regionals, but on nearly 10% of teams. Our Chaladon, even though it hasn't had that many super deep runs, it kind of finishes in the top 16 to 32 range, like I said, with Pelipper. Torkoal usage in this tournament was higher than I expected. As you can see here, it's at number 25. If we pivot over to the Charlotte Regional Championships for for example, Torkoal is a little bit lower at 27, but it's kind of just outside the kind of most popular picks. But and so as a result, I feel like people don't talk about it as much, but uh, a lot of notable players are still using it. Right. So it's something that you definitely want to show respect to. So uh, in terms of like Pokemon usage from Charlotte to Liverpool, uh, it, you know, most of it is quite similar. But Champau, for example, fell pretty significantly, where at Charlotte it was at 29% uh, of teams, whereas in Liverpool is on 21% of teams. And I wouldn't be surprised if Champau uses continues to decrease for a little bit, especially as Incineroar just becomes a little bit more popular, right? If you look at Charlotte Regionals, Incineroar was on 29% of teams, but at Liverpool is on 38%, so nearly a 10% increase from tournament to tournament. Uh, and I think, you know, Wolf winning with Incineroar definitely uh, put a bigger spotlight on it as well, which is funny to say because Incineroar has just been one of the most common Pokemon in VGC, the most common Pokemon in some of the formats that it's been allowed in. Turns out this Pokemon is still really good. People were talking about its demise and people were talking about the rise of new fire types like Entei, for example. But yeah, Incin is still really darn solid. So I think those are the main archetypes that I wanted to cover. But in summary, I think teams that you want to be prepared for, different versions of balanced teams, whether that be the team that Wolf won regionals with, Alex Underhill won regionals with, uh, the Gouging Fire teams that have been popping up recently, the Roaring Moon variants uh, of balance. These are all things that you want to be prepared for. A lot of different variants of Tailwind, specifically from Tornadus, Trick Room, whether that be Hard Trick Room or Free Graph Blood Moon Trick Room with flexibility with Tailwind on it. 
combos like NDD Iron Crown as well as Archaladon plus Rain, and then setup oriented Pokemon like Registeel are all things that I think you should be thinking about as you play through this format. Curious to see what brand new Pokemon and strategies rise up to the top as we continue to move on in this metagame. Let us know what you think will be popular, what you think might be overrated, underrated, or just something that you think has potential right now in the format. So thanks so much as always for joining me. My name is Aaron Cybertron Zhang. This is Beast Coast Pokemon, and we'll see you next time. All right, peace.